Once upon a time, there was a young prince who was born, and he was a very beautiful child. The only problem was that he had a crooked back, and it was a great sorrow for him. He continued to worry about it all the time. One day, his father asked one of the better artists or sculptors of the kingdom to carve a statue of the boy. But he said, don't give him a crooked back. Carve the statue so that he's standing up straight. So the sculptor finished his work, and it was a very beautiful statue of the prince. And he asked him to place the, the statue in the garden, the private garden of the prince uh, near their home. <clears throat> Every day, the prince would go out there and look at the statue and ponder and study the statue. And after some time, he would do it, do it so deeply that he would feel something happening to him. He would feel something inside that was like a tingling in his body and his heart was racing. And every time he went to the statue, he became more absorbed with it. And every time his heart was racing and, and his something was tingling, until one day, finally, an extraordinary thing, people even noticed that the prince seemed to be standing more straighter. And one day, they realized that he was standing perfectly straight. His heart was pounding and the tingling was in his body. It's a parable that I think can be about you and me, that we were born into this world and we weren't perfect. We had the stain of original sin upon us and we needed to become spiritually strong and straight. And so God the Father sent his son Jesus into the world to be our savior, to help us. And what do we need to do in order to accept Jesus into our life is we need to ponder him. We need to meditate upon him. We need to learn from him. And so with the, with the mind that we have, we hear with our ears these words of the gospel, but we have to hear them with our mind. We have to be able to picture Jesus in the scriptures that we hear. We may need to think about the scenes and place ourselves there and we suddenly become closer to what Jesus is telling us. And if we listen with the ears of our heart, then it starts to affect us even more because we read it and realize that Jesus is not only speaking to a crowd many centuries ago that were recorded and were reading, but that he's speaking these words to us. Today he's saying, Joe or Mary, take my yoke upon you and learn from me and I will give you rest. We have to hear him saying that to us. And with the ears of our soul, we have to become so absorbed with Jesus and what he's saying to us that we begin to change and we spiritually stand up straighter. It's a simple story and a simple comparison, but one I think is so very important for us. I love this image in the gospel today where Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. If you take ox number one and you measure its pulling strength, and then you take ox number two and measure its pulling strength and power, then if you put them together with a yoke, which is a double harness over both of their necks so that they can pull the load together, the amount of strength and power they have is more than the sum of what they individually had before. So what Jesus is saying to us is that you're not alone. I want to partner with you so that you realize that the work you're doing in this life, you're not doing it alone. I'm pulling the load with you. And we need to remember those words, that the Lord is pulling for us and with us in whatever we experience in life. There's a simple prayer. I used to have it written on my desk many years ago. And it says, Lord, help me to remember today that nothing's going to happen that you and I can't handle together. Nothing is going to happen today that you and I can't handle together. If we say that prayer each day and if we carry it with us, we will realize the help and the presence of the Lord. 
Jesus personally loves us, and the scriptures continue to tell us that over and over again. And so today we thank him for his word, and we ask him to help us remember that he walks with us always, no matter what, and ultimately is leading us to the everlasting joy and peace in eternal life. 